Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Kashmiri activists at UN expose Pakistan's role in spreading terrorism in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pashtun activists in Geneva protest against Pakistan's atrocities, demand global action at UN Human Rights Council. And Taliban's brutal law strip Afghan women of basic rights, UN call for global action. Pakistan has long been accused of perpetuating terrorism in India's Jammu and Kashmir, leading to the deaths of thousands of innocent civilians and causing unimaginable suffering. In recent months, the region has witnessed a surge in deadly attacks. During the 57th session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, Kashmiri socio-political activist Taslima Akhtar sharply criticized Pakistan for sponsoring terrorism in India's union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. We have a report. Jammu and Kashmir once renowned for its breathtaking landscapes and tranquil environment, has for decades been marred by terrorism. Pakistan's continued sponsorship of militancy has claimed thousands of lives, including civilians and security personnel. The people of Kashmir have paid the heaviest price, their lives overshadowed by violence, displacement and economic devastation. In the 1990s, Pakistan, through its notorious inter-services intelligence, orchestrated a series of operations across South Kashmir, targeting regions like Sopor, Shopian and Baramula. This campaign, led by militant groups such as lashkar e taiba Jashi Muhammad and Hezbollah Mujahideen, aimed to destabilize India and create chaos in Kashmir. Recently, at an event on the sidelines of the 57th UN Human Rights Council session in Geneva, Kashmiri political activist Taslim Akhtar from Srinagar delivered a powerful speech, shedding light on the root causes of the ongoing violence. Akhtar pointed directly at Pakistan's role in stoking militancy in the valley, a claim backed by years of evidence. role in perpetuating uh, terrorism in Kashmir. In the 1990s, Pakistan initiated clandestine operation in South Kashmir, targeting areas like Sopor, Shipyan and Baramala. These regions were deliberately chosen to create a hotbed of militancy, which would eventually spread to other parts of the valley. Pakistani strategy aimed to bleed India through a thousand cuts, exploiting Kashmiri's strategic location and cultural significance. Pakistani's in inter-service intelligence (ISI) providing training, funding, and logistical support to various militant groups, including the lashkar e taiba jesh e Muhammad, and Hezbollah Mujahideen. Recent terror attacks have spread beyond the valley to areas like Punch and Rajori, with the infiltration of armed militants continuing to destabilize these regions. The relentless violence has also caused rising tensions between India and Pakistan, leading to frequent ceasefire violations along the line of control. The insurgency has taken a heavy toll on Kashmir's social and economic landscape. Pakistan's strategic aim to bleed India through a thousand cuts has left the valley in ruins. Decades of terrorism have devastated Kashmir's social and economic landscape. Countless civilians have lost their lives. And many more have been uh, displaced or injured. The psychological trauma inflicted on Kashmiris, particularly children, is immersible. Education and economic development have suffered significantly, perpetuating a cycle of poverty and unrest 
The international community has repeatedly condemned terrorism in Kashmir, acknowledging Pakistan's involvement. Various United Nations resolutions and international organizations have urged Pakistan to dismantle terrorism, terrorist infrastructure and uh, cease support to militant groups. Since the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019, India has ramped up its diplomatic efforts, exposing Pakistan's role in state-sponsored terrorism. India's global push has succeeded in isolating Pakistan's on the international stage, with many nations condemning Islamabad's continued support for terror activities. India has also rolled out several economic initiatives to improve living standards in the region. Infrastructure projects, job creation schemes, and development plans are part of India's broader strategy to integrate Kashmir with the rest of the country and counter the impacts of terrorism. As the 57th session of the UN Human Rights Council continues in Geneva, Akhtar's message has already resonated across diplomatic circles. Her call for the world to recognize Pakistan's role in Kashmir's suffering is clear. Baloch human rights activists are rallying for international intervention, alleging serious violations in Balochistan by Pakistan security forces. At a demonstration in Geneva, they called on the United Nations to hold those responsible accountable for what they described as crimes against humanity. A report. For decades, the Baloch people have endured unimaginable suffering, trapped in the grip of poverty, unemployment and illiteracy. Not only that, they have long been subjected to a systematic campaign of aggression by the Pakistani state involving military operations, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and a consistent denial of their basic human rights. A majority of Baloch who demand independence from Pakistan's forceful occupation are being targeted by Pakistani security forces. The activists and intellectuals are being kidnapped, tortured and brutally killed. Recently, Baloch human rights activists gathered outside the United Nations headquarters in Geneva demanding urgent action against what they call an ongoing humanitarian crisis in Balochistan. The demonstration organized by Baloch Human Rights Council highlighted ongoing atrocities allegedly carried out by Pakistan's military forces in the region. China is expanding and China the demonstrators China also pointed fingers at China, accusing it of being an accomplice in the occupation. We are here protesting against Pakistani brutalities in Balochistan. Balochistan is bleeding. Uh, there is a, a serious human rights crisis in Balochistan. Balochistan is occupied and colonized by a rogue army of Pakistan, uh, which, are, uh, which is run by O-level metric past journals. They lack political wisdom uh, and knowledge. And Baruch people, uh, now that the um, Chinese have also joined hands with Pakistan, they are also equally culprit in occupying Baruchistan. Gawadar has been handed over to uh, China by Pakistan without the consent of the Baruch people. The activists expressed outrage over the lack of accountability for the Pakistani military's actions. Over the years, Numerous reports of mass graves, extrajudicial killings and disappearances have surfaced as a result of brutal crackdown led by the military. According to a recent report by Pank, the human rights wing of the Baloch National Movement, in August 2024 alone, there were 25 cases of torture, 14 extrajudicial killings and 44 enforced disappearances. 
We have also requested the United Nations uh, to intervene in Balochistan as the human rights situation is quite appalling and uh, uh, there is no accountability and the Pakistani authorities are uh, using their might with impunity uh, in uh, direct uh, violation of various human rights treaties that Pakistan has signed. The protesters demanded a United Nations-led fact-finding mission to investigate the genocide, enforced disappearances and crimes against humanity. When Pakistan is created by God, they also urged global human rights organizations to hold Pakistan accountable and ensure justice for the victims. 1948, the Punjabi army invaded Balochistan. Pakistan army and the Chinese Communist Party they are looting our gold, they are controlling our land, they are killing our people. We want the world to help us so that we can kick Pakistani army and the Chinese out of our land. So we can use our own wealth for our Baloch people. The activists highlighted that Balochistan's natural resources is being stripped by foreign powers leaving its people in poverty and without basic rights. Many Baloch, driven by fear and persecution, have been forced to flee their homeland and are now calling on the international community to protect their identity and sovereignty. Thousands of Baloch brothers are missing till now. In Afghanistan, a nation once known for strides in women's rights, the situation for women and girls has become increasingly dire since the Taliban's return to power in 2021. Decades of progress have been rolled back, leaving Afghan women under severe restrictions that limit their freedom, education and participation in society. Recently, Afghan women leaders convened at the United Nations calling for global intervention to restore their basic human rights. The international community, while vocal in its condemnation, faces an uphill battle as the Taliban continues to enforce its strict and oppressive policies. A hundred years ago, Afghanistan granted women the right to vote ahead of many Western countries, including the United States. By the mid-20th century, Afghan women were attending schools, shedding traditional gender segregation and playing an active role in public life. However, the Taliban's rise to power has reversed this progress, leaving women with little to no rights. Recently, Afghan women leaders gathered at the United Nations, urging the world to act. The summit organized by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres shown a spotlight on the dire situation of Afghan women. Guterres spoke of the deep gender-based discrimination in Afghanistan and highlighted how the exclusion of women from education, employment and leadership roles jeopardizes the country's future. Without educated women, without women in employment, including in leadership roles, and without recognizing the rights and freedoms of one half of its population, Afghanistan will never take its rightful place on the global stage. The event saw powerful voices calling for action, none more impactful than Hollywood actress Meryl Streep. She painted a grim picture of the current reality for Afghan women, making a comparison between the freedoms of animals and the harsh restrictions imposed on women by the Taliban. Today, in Kabul, a female cat has more freedoms than a woman. A cat may go sit on her front stoop and feel the sun on her face. She may chase a squirrel into the park. A squirrel has more rights than a girl in Afghanistan today because the public parks have been closed to women and girls by the Taliban. A bird may sing in Kabul, but a girl may not, 
and a woman may not in public. This is extraordinary. This is a suppression of the natural law. This is odd. Streep's comments came in the wake of new Taliban morality laws introduced last month. These laws codify the oppressive measures that have been in place since the groups returned to power, including banning women from public spaces, prohibiting them from making eye contact with men, and forcing them to cover their entire bodies when in public. These laws are part of a larger vision of an austere Islamic society that the Taliban seeks to impose. Over the past three years, the Taliban has issued over 100 edits that have systematically erased women from Afghan public life. Schools for girls remain closed, women are barred from working in most jobs and even public parks and gyms are off limits. The Taliban's morality ministry now ensures that these harsh rules are strictly enforced across the country. I feel that the Taliban, since they've issued over 100 edicts in Afghanistan, stripping women and girls of their education and employment, their freedom of, of expression and movement, they have effectively incarcerated half, half their population. And the international community, I, I believe, because the Taliban call themselves, I believe, Sunni, yes. The Sunni community has a special responsibility to, in some way, intervene on behalf of their women and girls. I, I, I feel that the international community as a whole, if they came together, could affect change in Afghanistan and stop the slow suffocation of an entire, half the population who are incarcerated. The Taliban's treatment of women is not just limited to curbing their social freedoms. Earlier this year, the regime reinstated the brutal punishment of stoning for adultery, evoking memories of their first reign of terror in the late 1990s. Such actions have drawn global condemnation, with many world leaders refusing to recognize the Taliban as the legitimate government of Afghanistan, as long as their policies on women remain unchanged. Activists from the Pashtun Tahafuz movement, PTM, Europe gathered outside the United Nations office in Geneva drawing international attention to the ongoing human rights abuses in Pakistan. The protest coincided with the 57th session of the UN Human Rights Council, with demonstrators raising concerns about enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings and arbitrary detentions targeting the Pashtun community. Demonstrators condemned the Pakistan Army's actions and called for global intervention to address these atrocities. In a powerful demonstration outside the UN office, PTM Europe activists brought global attention to the plight of Pashtuns and other ethnic minorities in Pakistan. With banners and placards, they decried the widespread human rights violations committed by Pakistani army including the enforced disappearances of Pashtun activists, the extrajudicial killings of civilians, and the arbitrary arrests of those who dare to speak out. Protesters highlighted the crackdown on prominent PTM leaders Manzoor Pashtin and Ali Wazir, both of whom have faced bans and imprisonment for their activism. The protesters demanded an end to the military's authoritarian grip on minority communities and urged the international community to act. Our main objective is that Pakistan is a country and its government, the Pashtuns, the Kashmir, and the Kashmir, ये atrocities कर रही हैं उनको condemn करें ये जो मंजूर पश्चिम और उसके 30 दोस्त हैं activists हैं PTM के उनपे जो 
بین لگایا ہوا ہے بلوچستان میں داخلے پر پابندی لگائی ہوئی ہے اس کے خلاف پروٹیسٹ کریں علی وزیر کو جو پکڑا ہے اس کے خلاف پروٹیسٹ کریں اس کے علاوہ ضلع من وزیر کا ایکسٹرا جوڈیشل کلنگ ہوا ہے اس کا بھی ہم کنڈیم کریں اور اس کے علاوہ جو پشتون گرینڈ جرگہ آرگنائز کر رہے ہیں اس کی سپورٹ میں اس کے ساتھ سولیڈیریٹی شو کرنے میں ہم یہاں دنیا کو بتائیں اور یونائٹڈ نیشنز کو انفارم کریں کہ پشتونز پاکستان میں خوش نہیں ہیں وہ مطلب یہ کہ اپنی ایک ہولیسٹک نیو سٹیٹیجی بنانا چاہتے ہیں تاکہ کس طرح وہ رہنا چاہتے ہیں اس ریجن میں تو اس سلسلے میں ساری پشتون قوم اکروس دی ٹرائبل لائنز اپنی سٹیٹیجی بنائے گی اپنا اپینین کریٹ کرے گی اور دنیا کو انفارم کرے گی کہ ہم کیا چاہتے ہیں The protesters also mourn the extrajudicial killing of Gilaman Wazir, who was killed in Islamabad in July in what many believe was an extrajudicial act ordered by Pakistani government. His death has sparked outrage within the Pashtun community and across human rights groups, who argue that Pakistan's military uses such killings as a means to silence dissent. Protesters also condemn the Pakistani government's decision to ban Manzoor Pashtin from entering Balochistan, a move seen as a part of a broader effort to crush any opposition to state policies. Pashtuns have long accused the Pakistani government of using military operations to target civilians under the guise of counter-terrorism. The Pakistani government claims that these operations aim to dismantle terrorist groups like Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, but the Pashtun community has borne the brunt, with over 6 million people forced from their homes. Thousands remain missing, and many families are left in limbo as they search for loved ones caught in the crossfire between the military and militants. Despite these grave violations, many of the human rights abuses against Pashtuns and other minority groups go unreported in Pakistan's media, forcing activists to seek international platforms like the United Nations to raise awareness. The protesters in Geneva emphasized that the world cannot remain silent in the face of these atrocities. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia.